Welcome to Booze in the Rocks, where we make cocktails for everyone. My name is David Edwards, and it's great to have you here today. We're going to make the Vesper. This is James Bond Martini. In fact, it's probably one of the most iconic cocktails ever in the world. Everybody knows what it is, but not everybody knows what's in it. Now, having said that, in 2006 in Casino Royale, James Bond gives specific ingredients and a method of how to make this. Dry martini. Oui, monsieur. Wait. Three measures of Gordon's, one of vodka, half a measure of quinoa lily, shake it over rice, and then add a thin slice of lemon peel. Yes, sir. Now that James Bond has told us exactly how to put this together, I'm gonna make this for you. But before I do that, I wanna show you a little short from dish that I found. And it's called, Why is James Bond the best spy ever? And I think we're gonna take a look at it because there's some information in here that I think that you as the viewer should understand. James Bond, mm -hmm. yeah. he has a martini shaken, not stirred. Yes. Yeah. Apparently the reason he has that is because when you have a martini shaken and not stirred, when you stir a martini, the ice, the water, and the alcohol are mixed together. When you shake a martini, the water sits on top of the alcohol, so he's only sipping water pretending to get drunk. Yes. That second part doesn't make sense. Okay. The basics of your martini. Your standard martini is all alcohol, which means 99.9% .9 of the time you are going to stir that type of cocktail. And what that does is chill and dilute your drink at the same time. Everything mixes together. Yes, that is correct. And then you strain it off into a chilled glass. Having said that, when you shake a cocktail, it also mixes everything together. It doesn't just sit on top. In fact, what happens is you break off little chunks and slivers of ice, which are actually filtered out by the bartender or yourself personally, and it's all a mixed cocktail. You do not get a layer of water to just drink. Like, let's be honest, the way layering works, and unfortunately I don't think they understand that, is that water has a density of one. Gin and vodka have a density of 0.9, and that amount grows depending on how many more ingredients and how much more sugar is added into that. By the time you add more ingredients and more sugar, that's the only time that's going to become denser than water and sink to the bottom. So having said that, his shaken martini has higher dilution because it's shaken and shaken cocktails usually dilute faster. Now, we are going to make the cocktail now that I'm done ranting about what I think is correct. Now, James Bond said he wanted three measures of Gordon's. Now I got myself some Gordon's gin here and a measure is one ounce. So in this case, we need a total of three ounces, which works out to 90 milliliters. Now, interestingly enough, I'm not sure specifically why James Bond chooses this gin, except for what I think is, it's something that he's very familiar with and something that he'll actually know the specifics of the taste. Now, his next ingredient is vodka. However, what he said is one measure of vodka, but he doesn't specify a specific type. So again, one ounce or 30 mils. Now, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a huge James Bond fan. I love James Bond. Um, he's the man. Having said that, uh, one of the things he asked for in this is Kino Lele. Now, you cannot get Kino Lele nowadays. You can get Lele Blanc. Kino had quinine in it, which is why it was called Kino Lele. And that gave it a very specific odor and taste, which the Lele Blanc actually simulates really well, but you'll never get it quite exactly the same. Now we do need half an ounce or half measure, which is 15 mils. The next thing you need to think about with this cocktail, of course, is shaking this with ice to do it in the correct fashion. And take a look at this cocktail. This is all booze. There's very little water. So even if you shook this and had a little layer of water on top, like they obviously thought, um, it's not gonna matter with that much booze. He's just gonna get trapped. So fill your glass with ice all the way to the top. And then what you do, grab your shaker tin, slap it on there really, really good, give it a flip and shake it with a smile. All right, so you wanna make sure you shake this good and hard. You're gonna get a huge frost on this. Um, having said that, now what you are going to see 
when I actually strain this into here is you will see in the bottom of this, the uh, fine strainer here, the ice crystals that we're keeping out of the glass. So one of the reasons this is also whitish in color is this is the trapped air that's actually trapped inside the cocktail. Now this will settle out eventually, but while we are doing that, we need to of course grab ourselves a little bit of a thin lemon peel because James said a thin lemon peel and we'll just kind of make it pretty just because we're serving it to James, give it a bit of a twist, throw it in like so. And here we have a gorgeous Vesper Martini. Mm. If you like gin and you like vodka with just a hint of the Lillet, and of course, just a little hint of lemon, this is absolutely the cocktail for you. So if you're a martini fan, right up your alley. If you don't like martinis, you still love James Bond. You know, what can I say? And if you like cocktails like this, take a look after the recipe card right up here.